Hello again, I am Blunty, and as my time in sweltering Bangkok back there draws to a close, I can finally tell you why I'm here in the first place. Those of you who saw the initial travel vlog thingy uh, know that Nvidia sent me here, but I wasn't able to tell you why at that stage. But now I can, well, now being when I'm allowed to publish this video, not exactly when I'm recording it, because obviously I'm still in Bangkok when I'm recording it. By the time I'm allowed to tell you about it, I'll be somewhere else. But when I'm recording this versus when I'm allowed to show you this video isn't really the point here. The point here is what they announced. And here I have my notes. And what they announced was new gaming laptop graphics chips. And these aren't M series chips, by the way. These are full fat Pascal chips, just like the ones in the desktop cards. Now, the short version of the story is they've taken these very, very same chips and what they've done to make them work in a laptop where you've got different sort of considerations for thermals and power use and all that kind of stuff is they've uh, basically used more cores, but at a lower frequency to sort of balance it out. And in effect, that means when you get a laptop with a GTX 1060, a GTX 1070, and yes, a GTX 1080, <laughs> you will in fact get roughly equivalent performance to the desktop card. So if you have a laptop with a GTX 1080 in it, you can expect it to perform about the same as your desktop with a GTX 1080 in it, which is, I don't have to tell you, kind of exciting. Now, if your mind hasn't already raced ahead of me here and started thinking about, well, actually that means all of the GTX 10 series uh, uh, laptop toting cards are fully VR capable now because of course the GTX 1060, the lowest end version here, performs about as well as a GTX 980 or a heavily overclocked GTX 970 is what I've been testing against because that was a far more popular choice for gamers in the end and that's virtual reality territory. And they did have a whole range of laptops from partners uh, on display for us and we're told there's 100 different laptops coming out at launch from from MSI from Asus from 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 Razer from you know all the all the common brands out there that do gaming laptops they've all got various versions coming out everything from sort of ultra slims to desktop replacement ultra bulky sort of serious immensely powerful crazy ass things and they had a, a small selection of those for us to run some tests on now I did run some benchmarks. I'm not gonna show you the benchmark numbers because I wanna save that until I actually get one of these in my hands so I can do it properly, do it over a long period, do some burn-in tests, run it for a long time under sort of more controlled uh, situations. Doing the benchmarks sort of in the little meeting room there where everyone's hovering around my shoulders and people are sort of chattering away and taking flash photography while I'm trying to do videos and stuff. It's very distracting, but my initial tests on the on the floor there in the meeting room with these with these actual laptops toting these cards it's holding up what they're saying about the performance being you know about equal to the the, the desktop cards it holds up absolutely holds up so you now have an ultra portable vr capable laptop and i've, I've got some numbers here one of the offerings uh for a vr capable laptop uh, and this is one of the laptops i got to try actually uh, so it's the MSI one, I think. Uh, 18 millimeters thick, which is ridiculous. That's a, that's thinner than my MacBook Pro, which is already pretty thin. Uh, four pounds, which I haven't done the conversion into metric, but that's not very heavy at all. So you've got this, what would have been called an ultralight laptop once upon a time, and it's VR capable. We also spent some time talking about the new display technology that they'll be putting into these uh, various GTX 10 series gaming laptops, and that is 120 hertz G-Sync displays, which <laughs> just makes me giggle. Again, there was one of those on, actually there were a few of those on display, um, and it is just astonishingly slick. Oh, and specifically this was on a machine that was running a GTX 1080, of course, and an i7 6700HQ CPU. So a standard sort of i7 uh, a mobile sort of CPU there with the GTX 1080, and yeah, running Doom at about 145 FPS, completely maxed out on a 120 hertz G-Sync uh, display, which means, you know, you're locked at that maximum G-Sync pretty much permanently if you turn it on. I turned it off to see how how high the, the, the frame rate went, but you know, when you lock it in a G-Sync, that's a constant. 120 hertz, 120 frames per second, locked at G-Sync, 120 hertz, no tearing, nothing. It is such a beautiful experience. It made me giddy, it really did. But it doesn't stop there because now, while well, we've had laptops with 4K displays in them before, and I've reviewed a few of them, um, when it comes to gaming, on the, on the Maxwell stuff at 4K in a, in a laptop, uh, 
you could do it, but you'd have to turn down a bunch of stuff. You were better off just upscaling from 1080p or something like that, and just using the 4K for real work experience when you're doing sort of video editing or picture editing. A software 4K really comes into its own in a lovely way there as well on the other side. But now, that probably sounded, that might, I, hit, I hit the paper right next to the mic, that probably sounded ugly anyway. Now, we have laptops with 4K screens with GPUs powerful enough to actually do something worthwhile in gaming. So I have the numbers here on the same system again, the GTX 1080 and an i7 6700K HQ. Uh, they're running 4K Doom at 70 FPS. 4K Doom, 70 FPS on a laptop. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, 52 FPS. Overwatch, 89 FPS in 4K on a laptop. It makes me happy. Now, on the overclocking, which is always a funny thing on laptops because you've got so much more concern about thermals. In a desktop rig, overclocking is pretty easy to deal with. You just turn the fans up and, you know, the big fans, and you've got at least three of them on, on any card you're overclocking with usually. And it makes it reasonably easy to get a really fat overclock and a, and a very reasonable sound output, sometimes even virtually silent, as I found recently. But yeah, now, with these laptop ones, because they're running on the same chips, the same architecture, they have thought about overclocking they have provided for overclocking they are going for the first time ever by the way you will be seeing out of box overclocked gaming laptops so you'll be able to buy a laptop from msi or whoever um, and out of the box it will be an overclocked gtx 1070 or gtx 1080 so you get extra performance right there they will have tested it and locked it in and, and you know of course you can do your own overclocking uh, they were talking here about um adding another 300 megahertz on top of the stock clocks um they showed us a demo which was uh, uh, the same overclock i got my desktop gtx 1080 i was just talking about there a 2050 megahertz overclock um, and the difference in game, and I forgot to write down which game they were talking about there. Might have been Doom by looking at these uh, frame rates. Anyway, it went from 120 to 140 FPS, which is a significant improvement um, <laughs> on that. Yeah, that test was on an MSI overclocked laptop they were talking about there. I imagine we'll learn more about those in the very near future, uh, because by the time you see this video, the partners will be allowed to talk about what they're bringing to you as well. So there'll be a bunch of news coming out today about all these different laptops from different manufacturers and what they've got and which ones are overclocked out of the box and which ones are yeah, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, basically the, the overall performance you should be seeing of these guys, like I've kept saying that there should be a roundabout desktop performance. The actual number they gave us is within 10% of desktop performance. Sometimes you get slightly more, sometimes you get slightly less, and you know, but it'll be within that, that window of, of performance you should expect from a desktop uh, class card on your laptop. And like I said, we, I did some testing and gameplay and fiddled about and ran some benchmarks and all that kind of stuff when I was fiddling about with the various machines and tested VR on them as well. And you know, it, it didn't feel like a laptop VR experience. It felt like I was running on a proper desktop thing. It was absolutely smooth. You know, HTC Vive, by the way, just in case you're curious about which VR we were testing, but perfectly smooth experience. Just, you know, if you didn't tell me, I wouldn't have known it was running on a laptop. It was magnificent. So yeah, these things are, are very exciting. But yeah, that's 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 it. The GTX 10 series coming to laptops, full-fledged, no compromises, absolutely wonderful. The 15 and 17 inch, 120 hertz G-Sync displays, 4K gaming, done properly at last. Every single GTX 10 series laptop is VR capable, even the super, super, super ridiculously slim ones that you can... Uh, just, <laughs> it's, it's a very exciting time to be alive, I think. <laughs> it's the takeaway from this. So anyway, thank you once again for NVIDIA for sending me here to, to come and learn about all this stuff. It was well worth the trip to learn about this stuff and get some sort of early hands-on time with the laptops and things. It was a fascinating experience, a very exciting experience. And of course, I got to come somewhere I've never ever been before, Bangkok, and, and see another place in the world, which I always love doing. Uh, anyway, so let me know in the comment section, is this kind of gaming laptop up well? I shouldn't say it's this kind of laptop, gaming laptop, really, because there is a bunch of gaming laptops. I mean, everything from the GTX 60, the super slim ones, all the way to the huge, big desktop replacement thing. So the question should be, which type of gaming laptop are you most looking forward to? Which one will fit into your life the most? Did you want the desktop replacement one so you can go from place to place to place and room to room and room, make absolutely zero compromises on your gaming experience? Or maybe you want to supplement your, your full-on desktop gaming rig with something that you don't have to compromise on, either GTX 1060 laptop. 
you know, super slim, but you know, still 1080p maxing out all your games. Or maybe you just want to go in that happy middle ground, the GTX 1070 sort of serious laptops. I mean, or a lot of, I guess a lot of this will depend on how they're priced, which I know nothing about yet, by the way. So don't even ask me. Um, I'm sure by the time this video goes up, you'll be seeing many, many, many stories about coming from all the different manufacturers about what they've got, how much they are, and when, when you can get them and how you can get them and, and how many you can get or something like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. I am Plenty. I will catch you next time. Let me know in the comment section which one's for you.